Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unbox and Reviews and How To, and on today's video we're taking a look at how to BIOS flash your Founders Edition RTX 2070 because it's just way too noisy. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we're taking a look at how to do a BIOS flash on a Founders Edition RTX 2070 graphics card for multiple reasons actually, one of which is the noise of the thing. If uh, I be completely quiet now, you can probably hear it whining away. It's in there if you haven't guessed already. So one of the downsides about the RTX 2070 Founders Edition from Nvidia is the fact that it uses ball bearing fans. Now ball bearing fans are fine when they're generally brand spanking new because the grease kind of lubricates everything which is going on, but as they get a little bit older and as they get hotter and eventually dry out, the bearings tend to have a little bit more kind of a wiggle room and basically they make a lot of noise, which is what you can hear now. Another downside of the RTX 2070 Founders Edition is the fact that there is basically zero fan control. So you can't really reduce it less than the roughly 40% speed which it goes at currently, which is about 1500 RPM, which for most people is probably fine, but for me personally, with it actually kind of at ear level, it is a little bit distracting. So in today's video, we're gonna go through and flash it with a new BIOS. We're gonna actually use the BIOS from a EVGA RTX 2070 XC Ultra, I think it is. Uh, thanks to the kind people at overclockersclub.com or .net. I'll put links in the video description and we'll see their site now. This is where you can get a great deal of information and they've probably done it a lot better than me. But I thought, hey, what the heck, got nothing to lose. Things driving me mad, so I'm gonna try and quiet it down. So with that said, let's get on with it. Once again, I do apologize for the fan noise of the graphics card in the background. If you can pick it up, it is a little bit distracting. I've got the NVIDIA performance overlay running, so you can see currently the fan speed is at 1500 RPM, thereabouts. GPU temperature is excellent, 24 degrees Celsius, which is uh, really good. This is just idling in Windows. So yeah, absolutely fine. Now, something which we should get out of the way straight away, obviously, flashing the bars on your graphics card can potentially brick it. So if you are gonna follow along any of this, you are basically on your own. It is a risky thing, you can destroy a graphics card. Now it doesn't have to be an RTX 2070, it can be pretty much any of the Finder's Edition cards. Or in fact, if you're cross flashing from any particular GPU to another GPU, this is basically the method to do it using NV Flash. So let's get up the instructions and we'll take a look at it. I should again once say, if you are gonna be doing this, make sure, best case scenario, it works first time. If it doesn't, then you will need to basically put the graphics card into another computer with another system which is running. So you will need two PCI Express slots and obviously the power to power the cards and basically try and reflash the BIOS. But again, this is very dangerous and uh, yeah, disclaimers everywhere. So this was done back in February 2019, uh, how to flash RTX video card BIOS to a different series. We'll go through, you can read all this. This is from overclockersclub.com uh, forward slash guides forward slash how to flash RTX BIOS. I'll put the link for this in the video description also and also big thanks for them for actually publishing this when they did. So basically what you're gonna need is uh, a couple of things. So the first thing you're gonna need is software. Now, if you're doing a ID mismatch, i.e. you're cross-flashing, so from, say, another brand to a Founders Edition, then you will need to use this one here, MV Flash, the ID mismatch disabled version. If you're doing it from another card, then you can use this one here. Again, this is gonna be for a Founders Edition, so we'll be using this one here, the Founders ID mismatch disabled section. Also, you're gonna need some other software, i.e. the BIOS for the graphics card. Now, they've actually kindly put some BIOSes here. So this is the reference BIOS PCBs for desktop cards only. So we've got one for the RTX 2060. We've also got the 2070, 2080, and 2080 Ti. And also goes through, they've done a video, so you, you can check all that stuff out from their site should you wish to. So let's go ahead and download the two sections. Now, if you click on the NV Flash here, to try and download it, it goes to Tech Power Up site, which is a, a fantastic site with loads of resources. They've actually updated the version of this, so this is now NV Flash 5.590.0 as of today's recording date, which is the 2nd of November, 2022. And this hasn't been updated since 2020, but this is absolutely fine. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and download that one. So, so make sure you get that one. And also you're gonna obviously, you're gonna need a BIOS. So again, 
we are using an RTX 2070 Finder's Edition, so we're going to use the EVGA XC Ultra. So click on that, again it'll take you to Tech Power Up. You can go ahead, check out the information there, and you can click on Download Now and save it to somewhere uh, easy to get to. Now, there is a good reason for that, because we do have to use some command lines here. So my suggestion is to create a folder in the root of your C drive and put everything in there. So this is our C drive, so I'll create a folder called MV Flash, and inside here is the MV Flash download. I've actually renamed it, it is normally MV Flash 64 dot dot dot, the file name extension. You can basically rename the EXE to whatever you want to make things easier to remember. Uh, you can call it just Flash if you want to, the choice is entirely up to you. The more important thing is the actual extensions we put on that executable. So we've also got our download here, which is our BIOS, so I'm going to drag that into the folder here. So this is our EVJ RTX 2070 8192 blah 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 ROM. So again, because we're going to be doing this in a DOS environment or a kind of command prompt, it's probably a good idea to actually rename this. So I'm just going to call this EVGA.ROM. Makes no difference, the file is still exactly the same. So yeah, you're going to need two files. So the next thing to do is actually something actually quite important. We're going to go into Device Manager and we're going to actually disable our graphics card. So that it's not actually running. It still will run as a display adapter, but the drivers will be kind of muted or minimized or just basically inactive. So find your graphics card, right click on it, and choose disable device. This is going to uh, disable device, blah, blah, blah. And you may find that your resolution and things like that will change depending on your type of display. So now we've got no scaling or anything. And if you look at the actual graphics card, you can see it's uh, got a thing by it. And actually, the fans have gone very quiet already. So what we want to do now is to open up a command prompt. So type in CMD, right click and choose run as administrator. And click yes on user account control. So this is where we're gonna actually run these commands from this folder. So we wanna change our directory, change it to NV flash. So CD backslash NV flash, and that will give you the C prompt NV flash. So now what we want to do is actually make a backup of our existing ROM on the card. This is really important. So if things go wrong, you want to be able to restore your existing ROM or BIOS back to the graphics card. So this is really important. Make sure you keep this file safe as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So in order to back it up, we want to run the MV flash command. So we'll do MV flash, then a space, then a minus, then a B, which means backup, then a space, and then basically whatever you want to call it. So we'll call this fe.rom and press enter. So now you can see the graphics adapter is being challenged. And there we go, at the top there it says saving of image completed. Now I would probably make sure that it is actually there. So if we look into our folder over this side, we can see we've got fe.rom and it's the right file size. So that is awesome. Same size as the EVGA ROM that we've got, which is the one we are going to flash. So now we're good, we can go ahead and actually start to do the flashing process. Now these BIOSes are actually protected, so what we want to do is type in MV flash space minus minus, so two minuses, and then we're going to do protect and off. So that's going to turn off protection, if I spell it right. So protect off, press enter. And there we go, it's setting the EEPROM software protect setting and removing the right protect. So now the card is basically unlocked and ready to go. So now is the moment of truth. We want to actually flash the new BIOS. So we're going to type in MV flash, then a space, then a minus, then six, then a space. And then we want to type in the name of our ROM that we're going to flash. So in my instance, I've called it EVGA ROM. So we're going to EVGA dot ROM. And then all we need to do is press enter. Scary time. So you can see there's uh, mismatches, etc. It says it does not match your version, which we're kind of expected because we're cross flashing from another brand. Um, if you want to go ahead, you have to press Y. If you're not too sure, obviously don't. Uh, at this point now, again, it says warning, overriding the board ID can be very dangerous. Uh, is, this can destroy your card, etc. So yeah, if you're not sure, stop now and maybe you get someone else to do it. If you're okay, you want to do it, you have to type in yes, uppercase, and then press enter. And then you get another warning to say this could potentially go wrong, this could be a disaster, are you sure you want to go ahead? 
So we're going to go ahead and press yes. And there we go, storing the updated firmware image, doing all the flashing, etc. Don't turn off your PC now, this would be a bad idea. And there we go, a reboot is required for the effect to actually update, or the update to take effect rather. So we're happy with that, so we can type in exit there. And at this point now we can just reboot the system, so go down to start and just restart. Well we've got an image, that's a good sign. And when you first turn the computer back on, you may find that the resolution is going to be a little bit messed up because it's going to be basically trying to install the drivers again. So let's go into our device manager. And you can see it's still currently disabled. That's not a problem. So all we want to do is to double click on it and click on enable device. And it's asking for the drivers to be reinstalled. So we're gonna go ahead and do that if it doesn't do it itself, which it seems it has just done. And there we go. There's our NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070, now reinstalled. And if we open something like GPU Z, you can now see there is our graphics card. So it's reporting, but it's now reporting a sub vendor of EVGA and the version of the card. So awesome stuff is working and best of all, just double check in, yep. The fans have actually stopped, which is awesome. So there we go, very happy. It's a uh, flash the BIOS, it now thinks it's an EVGA XC Ultra. So you can actually now, if you want to, you can cr increase power limits. So you can get roughly about another 30 watts out of it, I believe. Uh, on the slider, actually in the EVGA Precision X1, you can go in there and do all kinds of things now. You can also, which is a, a very nice side effect, you can actually control some of the RGB lighting on the side of your car. So if you don't like the green, which is the default NVIDIA colors, you can change it to whatever you want. Although I have found that the rainbow option doesn't appear to work, although you can choose any static color of any of the colors you can pick from the palettes. But yeah, the rainbow effect doesn't seem to work. The kind of unicorn puke doesn't work, but you can do a cycle between kind of various colors and it will do it. There's also pulse, or you can just turn it off altogether if you don't want to, or if maybe you're going through a monochrome look, a very nice white effect uh, fits in with pretty much most builds. So if you want to do that, you certainly can do. And of course you can tweak with the power settings, you can tweak with the memory settings, clock speeds, all that kind of stuff. And more importantly, you can adjust the fan speeds. So currently our fans are not spinning at all, which is excellent. And I can't hear that ball bearing whine in the background. Anyway, there you go. A risky thing to do, not for everybody. I understand that. Obviously for more information, if you want to go to the links in the video description, Everything will be there. If you're not sure, please do reach out to us. Obviously, if it's something a little bit outside of my knowledge, then I'll pass you back on to the guys at Overclockers Club. But I think that's gonna wrap this one up. Hopefully it's been enjoyable. If it has, smash the like button. If you wanna see more content like this on a regular basis, hit the subscribe button and the chime notification and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.